a technicality that I've forgotten in some of the previous problems is these really should be equilibrium arrows. Okay. This is an equilibrium reaction. That's a technicality. It seems like professors don't test much on that. Well, you know? it, it depends on the context, and uh, it depends on the professor. Sometimes it's important, and sometimes it's not. The, the reason that it's important to see that this is equilibrium is that it's possible to also do a retro aldol condensation. That is, you could go backwards from here to here. For us, that's just a technicality, though, because I didn't see your instructor ever talk about that in the lecture okay. notes, so we're not going to talk about that much okay. because your instructor didn't focus on that retro condensation. On the other hand, we have seen that, that there are a bunch of other cases where your instructor does want you to know that these are hidden carbonyls that could be going backwards to a carbonyl. But I don't think you're, uh, you, that your uh, instructor is focusing on how this is a hidden carbonyl. That's just not a topic that your class is covering. So for us, it's just a technicality that these are equilibrium arrows. Well, that previous problem that we did, we had a lot of trouble with the mechanism, but this one we just flew right through it, so that's good progress. And we saw the basic pattern. Deprotonate the alpha carbon, and then the alpha carbon attacks the carbonyl. And then under hot conditions, you deprotonate the alpha carbon again, and it attacks the carbonyl carbon again. That's the basic pattern. What type of functional group did we end up with here under cold conditions? Uh, we ended up with, um, under cold conditions, where does your final product go after? This would be the product under cold conditions. We ended up with uh, uh, beta hydroxy uh, aldehyde. That's right. And here's the product we would have gotten under hot conditions. What would be a good name to describe this? A uh, alpha beta unsaturated aldehyde. Good. Another technicality. We saw that we had to kick off the oxygen, um, a neutral oxygen, which is normally a poor leaving group. Mm -hmm. So there has to be some explanation for how we were able to kick off that poor leaving group. Well, we talked about last time how the explanation is that we're forming a conjugated system here. Nature likes forming this conjugation, so that is what allows us to kick off this oxygen. We certainly could cannot protonate the oxygen before we kick it off, because that would make it positive, which is not consistent with our conditions. All right, well, I think this is a real important mechanism to know, so we've practiced it a bunch of times, and you should keep practicing it. Okay. But you should also be able to draw the product without the mechanism. Okay. And one thing that you did that was good here is that you were kind of drawing the carbonyl carbon following this pattern here. That is, for example, in this picture, you should put the hydroxy up into the left, and you put the nucleophile up into the right. And I think that helps us to get the right product here. And this follows this pattern here, where we have the starred carbon down here. Here's the two carbon chains or hydrogen off to the side, and here's the alpha carbon that formed the double right. bond. So following these patterns helps us. So suppose you were not going to do the mechanism. How would you have drawn the product? Well, you just would have used these as your pattern, and you would still use the star and the alpha here, and you'd simply say, I'm um, taking this alpha carbon and having it attack the starred carbon, and you want to make sure that um, you don't lose any of the other bonds on the alpha carbon. And down here in category three, you have to remember that the carbonyl oxygen is completely gone, mm -hmm. and the alpha carbon now has a double bond to the starred carbon, but it's still attached to the same thing as before. So we'll do one more aldol condensation problem, and this time let's try to practice it without the mechanism. Okay. So just drawing the product. Right. So we're going to now try to draw what the product would be, again, under either hot or cold conditions. And this time for practice, we'll try to do it without going through the whole mechanism. This means two equivalents of cyclic okay. antinome. It's not part of it. But is that, uh, is that a, uh, does that mean it's a five-membered ring? That's correct. Connected just to a ketone? Uh, yeah, let's see if we can come up with the right structure for that. So let's see if we can draw what cyclic antinome would look like. That's a good start. Now the key thing is that you can put the ketone in the ring. Okay. I think you might have been thinking about putting it outside the ring, but we can just put it in the ring. 
that wouldn't work for an aldehyde. An aldehyde can't be part of a ring, but a ketone can be part of a ring. So this is what cyclopentanone looks like. Still working? Or are you done? No, this is for cold. Good. That's good. Excellent. That's right. Let's talk that through a little bit, but you okay. used a good technique. Again, since we're not doing the mechanism, we want to use this as our model. So the first thing I would do, what I find helpful here is I'm just going to redraw the electrophile. So here's the electrophile that's getting attacked. However, if we're going to do a category one attack, it should end up looking like this. So instead of being double bonded to the carbonyl oxygen, it should be only single bonded to the carbonyl oxygen, which will along the way have to gain a proton, so it ends up neutral. And who's the nucleophilic atom that's attacking it? The alpha carbon. So I would just start by just drawing in this alpha carbon, and then I'd have to ask, who's the alpha carbon attached to? Uh, well, the numbering here helps you. We know that the alpha carbon is part of a five-membered ring. Five, and you can number it uh, around any way that you like. How did you number it? So you put the carbonyl up here. Basically, I have my picture doesn't quite look like yours, but anyway, you said this was five, four, three, and two. So the number five would still. So this carbonyl hasn't changed. Mm -hmm. One thing you always remember about the aldol condensation is that one of the carbonyls is just along for the ride. This carbonyl isn't getting attacked. Right. And I guess that's the answer that you got. Good. So that's a good approach. So now we have to go on to show what the product would be under hot conditions. So now we're using this as our model. So if we're going to use this as our model, here's the starred carbon. And now in this model, the carbonyl oxygen has been completely kicked off. If you wanted to, you could show that it got kicked off as hydroxide. And now the alpha carbon should be double bonded. You kind of drew that slinted off to the side, but we could redraw it so it looks prettier like this. And then this is part of a five-membered ring. And we know if we call this 1, 5, 4, 3, 2, that this still has the carbonyl. So now we get this product. Okay. Here's our beta hydroxy ketone, and here's our alpha beta unsaturated ketone. Okay. So without the mechanism, uh, if we use these as our models, it does not, doesn't take too much time to draw these two products. Okay. Incidentally, I noticed that the terminology that your instructor uses is your instructor calls this step the aldol reaction. Mm -hmm. And then they call this step dehydration. Mm -hmm. they, must, they call this dehydration because we're basically losing the elements of water. We're losing an HO from here and an H from here. So that's H2O overall. It's like a dehydration. Okay. So the terminology is not completely standard. But your instructor calls the reaction under cold conditions the aldol reaction. And then they call this further bit here dehydration.
I lied. Let's do one more Alval compensation. But again, we'll just do the, uh, the products without the mechanism. So to save time again, we'll just do the products without the mechanism. And let's show what the products would be under either hot or cold conditions. 